a firefighter finds a feathered friend in a sticky situation and reaches out with a helping hand. Some drivers weave in and out of traffic, but this driver weaves into her house and out onto her lawn. Two BYU students run a popular social media page that rates some of Utah's tastiest sit-downs, drive-ups, and hole-in-the-walls. See what these self-labeled eat freaks are reviewing near you. A couple of local students boost their business bankroll by building their own bling. We'll tell you where you can buy their baubles, bracelets, and bolo ties. BYU installed some vending machines that don't dispense snacks, but bite-sized stories. Find out where you can grab one of these tiny texts to go. A dedicated dad brings a Disney lover's dream to life in his backyard with a fully functioning roller coaster. We'll tell you how he made the mini Matterhorn. America strong again. Election Day is finally here. Millions of Americans have already voted, but President Trump and Joe Biden are making a final push for votes. And here in Utah County, there are plenty of people coming here to vote in person. There happens that you know, people will be able to accept it. Many people are feeling anxious on this election day, but some college students say they are optimistic and hopeful. Welcome to Newsline. It's Tuesday, November 3rd, Election Day. I'm Joseph Carson. And I'm Allie Arnold. Utahns head to the polls for their final chance to cast their ballot after historically high levels of early voting. Mm, that's right. The polls here in Utah have been open for five hours, and thousands of people have already mailed in or dropped off their ballots. But there are many others who are showing up to vote in person today. Emma Benson is live in Provo at a polling location. Emma, how do the polls look? Well, Ali, I'm here at one of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints buildings in Provo, which is being used as today's polling location. And as you can see behind me, there are people coming in and out of the building in order to vote here in person. There are cars coming all the way out of the parking lot. There's rows and rows of cars, plenty of people coming out to vote today. It's been busy since early this morning, and it keeps getting busier. And so we can expect to keep seeing more and more people coming to vote today. Now, I'm here with someone who just voted, or a poll worker? Poll worker. Poll worker. What is your name? Tyler. Tyler, nice to meet you, Tyler. And tell me, what is, uh, have you been a poll worker before, and what is your role? This is the first time. Um, we're kind of just figuring it out as we go. It's 2020, but I'm basically just kind of directing people as they go inside and making them kind of learn as we go, and yeah. Just, I don't really have a, an official position. It's just kind of like we're, we're figuring it out, but we have a pretty good system going on now, so. Awesome, and tell me, what, what has it been like to be a poll worker during the pandemic? <laughs> Different, I guess. I've never done it before, so I'm sure it wasn't like this every other year, but it hasn't been too crazy. Just a mask is really about it. <laughs> Great, well, thank you, Tyler, appreciate it. Now, we'll tell you, uh, coming up in a bit, we're gonna talk with Amelia Powers Gardner, who is, oh, it looks like she's here now. We could bring her in. Amelia is the county clerk, and she's going to tell us more about what's been transpiring today. Now, Amelia, I'm sure this is the busiest day of the year for you. Right, this is the busiest day of my four-year term of office. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. And we've been waiting for this election for four years, right? And it's, I mean, it's super historic, not only because we're in the midst of a, of a pandemic, but also because of voter turnout. I understand that we've already broken the record for Utah County voter history, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. I just ran the numbers. We're at about 219,000 voters right now. The previous record was 205,000. Wow, that, that is incredible. And are we still doing same-day voter registration today? Yes, we are. So if you want to register at the polls, bring your ID, proof of citizenship, and some sort of like a utility bill or a bank statement to show that you're resident. Great. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. Awesome. Well, coming up in a few minutes, we're going to tell you, take you inside and tell you more about the process. Back to you. Thanks, Emma. Both President Trump and former Vice President Biden are making a final push for votes in crucial swing states. But now the final day of the 2020 presidential campaign is coming to a close. The beautiful victory tomorrow. I have a feeling 
we're coming together for a big win tomorrow. Both candidates visited multiple battleground states, and both candidates stopped in Pennsylvania, a key state in the 2016 Electoral College decision that won Trump his presidency. After four years of failure and division, we have the power to change America. After all, you deserve a president with proven results, not a career politician with empty words and broken promises. Right now, across the country, ballots that will speak for themselves are being cast, and we will see how the candidates' efforts paid off, and who will be our president for the next four years. Although many winners may quickly be evident tonight, the increase in mail-in voting because of the pandemic is expected to push back the release of full results in many key states. And there are several states that will not have a complete result for possibly a week or more. For the first time in over a decade, Utah will have a new governor. Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox looks to be a shoo-in for the role, despite criticism from his Democratic opponent Chris Peterson, a professor at the University of Utah. Governor Gary Herbert is not running this election, but endorses Cox, who is also the leader of the Coronavirus Task Force. Peterson says Utah should have implemented a mask mandate to fight COVID-19. Cox is a moderate and one-time critic of President Trump, and also beat out former U.S. Ambassador to Russia John Huntsman Jr. in the GOP primary. Cox and Peterson have notably appeared together in ads promoting civility. A stunning $19 million has been poured into the 4th Congressional District race. Democratic incumbent Ben McAdams and Republican Burgess Owens compete in one of the few contests considered a toss-up this Utah election. Owens, a former NFL player noted for his Fox News appearances, won the Republican primary by running to the right of his opponents. McAdams is a moderate known to buck his Democratic Party leadership, who is focused mostly on kitchen table issues. Northern Utah's first congressional district is open for the first time in nearly two decades. Republican U.S. Representative Rob Bishop is re now retiring, and GOP candidate Blake Moore of Salt Lake City Businessman is favored to win. He's running against Democrat Darren Perry. U.S. Representatives Chris Stewart of the 2nd Congressional District and John Curtis, who represents the 3rd Congressional District, are, who are both Republican, are both expected to cruise to victory. There are several initiatives and amendments on Utah ballots this year. Amendment A proposes changing the language in the state constitution to gender-neutral language using words like people instead of men. Amendment C would remove slavery as a form of punishment for crime, which is currently allowed in the Utah Constitution. Amendment E would guarantee a constitutional right to Utahns to fish and hunt. And the controversial Amendment G claims to expand the use of income tax to include social services for children and individuals with disabilities. If you still haven't voted, it's not too late to cast your ballot. Go to the website vote.utah.gov. If you need information on candidates, issues, or amendments, click on this button. Click here to find out where and how to vote. You can vote in person uh, or drop your ballot off at a drop box. Do not mail in your ballot as it will not arrive on time and will not be counted. The polls are open until 8 p.m. tonight. If you are in line by 8, you will still be allowed to vote. Ballots must also be in the drop box by 8 p.m. as well. If you've already voted, you can track your ballot by clicking on the envelope icon. The election results later tonight, uh, to see the election results later tonight, scroll to the bottom of the page. If you need a lift to get to the polls, you can take a Utah Transit Authority service or a green bike for free all day today. Don't forget that face coverings are required on all UTA services and check their website for what stop you need to take to get to the polls. All Salt Lake City residents will also be able to ride green bikes for free during the 24-hour period by using the promo code 202020 at any green bike kiosk. Riders can take as many as 30-minute trips as they want during the 24-hour window. Despite the political divide in the country, many students at BYU still find ways to speak up about their political views either on social media or with honest in-person conversations. Mm -hmm. Newsline reporter Alex Sorensen met with some students on campus to find out how they share their opinions and what response they think the outcome of today's election will bring. Alex? I'm here at BYU campus on election day to talk with students about their response to this year's presidential race. Students say the right to vote is important to them for many different reasons. Uh, when you're politically active, you're more involved in what happens around you and you're more involved with what happens to your family. You're old enough to do a lot of things. You're old enough to have an opinion on these things that will impact you in the future. To me, like human rights are way, 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 way more important than things like the economy. But it isn't always easy to keep an open mind and also stay true to their own political views. Finding 
you know, common ground and finding out another person's self-interest first. I think that's really key in understanding rather than, you know, bulldozing your way into a conversation, wanting to lay down all your facts, like all the facts that you know and all the opinions that you have. By looking to reputable news sources and having open conversations, the students I spoke with on campus think they can live together peacefully, even if they disagree. It's also important for you to be like, this is someone I love, this is someone I care about, and they believe that they're doing the right thing. As much as you can find more neutral <laughs> news, less opinion-led, but more fact-based. No one knows who will win the election tonight, but students say they will have to find a way to deal with the results. I hope that, you know, whatever happens, that, you know, people will be able to accept it. I know whatever happens, I'll have to, um, but I still will be politically active and try and make sure I stand up for what I believe is right. Regardless of their political opinions, the BYU students I spoke with seemed hopeful that the winning candidate will lead America into a brighter future. Reporting for Newsline from Brigham Young University, I'm Alex Sorensen. Thanks, Alex. With all the election day anxiety, we could use a laugh. <laughs> Rachel, show us how people are providing some election comic relief. Yeah, obviously social media platforms are absolutely buzzing today. Many people are using their social platforms to encourage others to vote, even celebrities like Oprah Winfrey, Ryan Reynolds, Taylor Swift, and many more have posted about their votes and encouraged others to hit the polls. Some are also posting election day anxiety tips like avoid ruminating on worst case scenarios, setting media consumption boundaries, and creating a plan to get through the day. Others are using humor to relieve some election day stress. One user shares, if, a vote, if I vote but, but don't post that I voted, will my vote still count? Asking for a friend. I personally love all of the I voted posts. I think they're great. Hulu Vote has posted a series of these movie posters that say, vote, your favorite show can wait, your vote can't. Sarah shares this Mean Girls meme that says, on November 3rd, he asked me what day it was. It's election day. And she says, Mean Girls meme for election day. Pat says, me laughing at all the election memes versus me thinking about the election. And finally, we have the Instagram account when we all vote posted this Power Rangers meme that says mask, water, pen, ID, phone, me at the polls. If you haven't already taken the time, make sure you take the time to vote and take care of yourself. Back to you. West Valley City Police released videos of their canine incidents. Stop fighting, the dog will stop. Stop fighting, got him. We'll tell you why the department is making the videos public 